Coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We have an update on trade and market access issues that could impact U.S. beef exports. Plus, a look at the NCBA Political Action Committee and the role it plays in protecting the beef industry. Now, from the Denver headquarters of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, it's NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Auctioner. The first half of 2018 was outstanding for beef exports, with new records set for both volume and value as demand for U.S. beef continues to grow internationally. At the same time, producers fear that ongoing trade disputes could jeopardize our international access and slow the momentum for the rest of this year. We recently had a chance to catch up with cattlemen and women from around the country to get their thoughts on international trade and why it's so important to the industry. Well, there's a couple reasons. Number one, we, we raise more beef than we can consume here in the United States. And the other thing is 96% um, of the people live out of the, in the world live out of the United States, and, and we want to be able to sell beef to them and not just here at home. Well, of course, trade's greatly important because especially right now where we have large numbers in cattle and a large number in competing meats, we can't eat that here. So we have to export it and push it off to trade. And not, I shouldn't say push off. It's really the great thing about trade is it helps us utilize products that we may not use, we may not value the same as other people around the globe. So trying to get that fair and play fair and level playing field is the best important thing to us because I think really if you put our beef up against any other protein, we can win for taste and value. So I think open and fair markets are the absolute most important thing that we can have and I do support the president in a lot of his um, work on trade. Um, it's scary for me personally because as things go on it does impact me short term and I'm very concerned about that. But I believe very much in getting rid of subsidies and um, I'd much rather have fair trade than money in my pocket from the government. And joining me now from our Washington DC office is Colin Woodall, Senior Vice President of Government Affairs for NCBA. Welcome, Colin. It's great to be with you. We hear a lot about tariffs. What impact could these have on U.S. beef producers? It's important to remember that tariffs are nothing more than taxes, and they are used as a tool in trade negotiations to either protect domestic producers or to try to inflict a little economic pain on countries where you're trying to make some changes to their overall trade agenda. We are seeing both of that right now with the president's actions on trade. For us as a beef industry, we are currently being hit with tariffs from Canada and China, but it's a hit that we're willing to take. And the reason why is because the president has made it a priority to address non-tariff trade barriers which have impacted our overall access to those markets, especially in China, where they have prohibited the use of beta agonists and implanted hormones. And the president is the first administration who has actually been willing to step up and fight those fights for us. So we are supportive of his actions and we look forward to taking down those non-tariff trade barriers in order to have a brighter future in our trade negotiations and relations. So can you give us an update on the farm bill? The farm bill is extremely important for us in the cattle business, especially this one because we are asking for Congress to establish a vaccine bank to help us be prepared and protect from foot and mouth disease. Now the vaccine bank is just one tool that will be used to make sure that we can protect ourselves in the case of reintroduction of foot and mouth disease, but it's important that we have it. It has been authorized in both the House and Senate versions of the bill, but right now we are in a conference committee where the House and Senate are trying to work out the differences, and for us that means trying to determine exactly what funding level we will see for the building of the vaccine bank. Uh, we are hoping to get that wrapped up as quickly as possible because the current 2014 farm bill expires on September 30th. So there is a big push to have the new farm bill in place as quickly as possible so that we and other groups in agriculture can have a little certainty on what farm policy looks like. You know, fake meat is another hot issue. How has NCBA been involved in this topic? 
Fake meat has been a priority for NCBA since we passed policy on it at the annual convention in Phoenix earlier this year. We are looking at two things in particular. One is making sure that this product is actually regulated. Before we got involved, we discovered that the fake meat product was not being regulated by any uh, federal government organization or entity. We knew that we needed to change that. So right now we are working with Congress and the White House to ensure that USDA's Food Safety Inspection Service has the primary jurisdiction over fake meat. We need to make sure that we have a level playing field. If these companies are going to operate in our space, they need to be regulated just like we are. And when we talk to these companies, they say from a cellular standpoint, their product is just like ours. If that's the case, that means that they are subject to the exact same pathogens. And we know that USDA has the expertise in regulating those pathogens. So we are pushing for that decision to be made and ultimately to prevent any label that is attached to this product that uses the term clean meat, another role for USDA to ensure that that label is never approved. So Colin, how important are the upcoming midterm elections to the beef industry? The upcoming elections, much like every election, is extremely important to us in the cattle business because it determines who will be in control of Congress. For us, when we look at our engagement with Congress, we have to have friends on both sides. Any organization that wants to win in Washington, D.C. by working with only one party is going to be sorely disappointed in their failure. So we have to have friends on both the Democratic and Republican side in order to make sure that people are willing to step up and fight for the priorities of NCBA and U.S. cattle producers. So we're going to watch this very closely in order to support those candidates that have shown support for the U.S. cattle business. The Political Action Committee plays an important role in NCBA. Why do you think it's so important and how can producers make contributions to this effort? Well, one way we can help influence these midterm elections is to make sure that candidates that share our values, that share a need to support our industry and protect our industry can get elected or stay elected to Congress. And to do that, our PAC, our Political Action Committee, allows us to help provide them with funding to run their campaigns. It is an extremely important part of the overall political process we have in this country, and we have to be a part of that uh, in engagement in order to ensure that our friends are the ones that are ultimately getting elected. And to do so, all you have to go to our website, that's www.beefusa.org, to find out more about how you can engage and support in CBA's PAC. Thanks, Colin, for your time. Thank you. As Colin just mentioned, with the midterm elections right around the corner, the NCBA Political Action Committee has been working to support candidates who share the values and goals of America's beef cattle producers. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Matt Fleck has more. For several decades, the NCBA Political Action Committee has worked to raise funds from member contributions and use those funds to back political candidates who are supportive of issues that are critical to the U.S. beef cattle industry. We're not only giving them a check, we're also telling them what we need, what we stand for, what, what we're looking for, and a lot of times what we want is very, very common sense. It's necessary to have lawmakers who understand the cattle industry. PAC contributions help Colin Woodall and his staff in Washington get the access they need on Capitol Hill to explain the issues that are important to rural America. Colin needs every tool he can to make sure that he can deal with these bills, he can deal with our congressmen, he can deal with our senators, and a lot of that has to do with money, a lot of it has to do with getting the right people elected, it also has to do with showing them that we support them through the election process so that they remember us later on when we need them when something comes up. Cattle men and women need pro-business, pro-agriculture members of Congress. NCBA's Political Action Committee makes sure there are plenty of representatives and senators that will speak for and protect the best interests of the beef industry. That's why midterm elections like this year are a high priority for the PAC. We have a tendency to always get bound up on the presidential election years. And they're always the big years when we're trying to raise a lot of dollars and it has to do with whoever's running for, for the presidency. 
The problem is, is a lot of the legwork and the work that gets done, as we all know, is in the Senate and the House. And right now there's a lot of those spots that are up. And there's, there's concerns that some things could happen in the Senate. So we've got to make sure that we have the dollars we need for this race that's coming up to get ourselves acquainted with new ones that are coming in, but also make sure that some of our good old standbys that have been strong supporters of the cattlemen, um, that we can, we can properly support them the way we need to. Individual PAC contributions enable NCBA to participate as a serious player in the competitive political environment in Washington. Any amount, big or small, can make a difference. And there's even a cool way they honor some of the annual contributors. One of the biggest things that I see that you could be a part of is to put your brand up on the brand wall. Um, it's $500 a year. It's in, the, it's in the D.C. office there in the Capitol. And what's kind of neat about that is you'll have your name up on the wall. Um, your brand will be up there. Um, and when senators walk in, they'll move them around. I've been there when they've done that. If an Iowa senator is going to be there or a congressman, they'll have Griman brothers right there in the middle, and they'll point it out to them to show who some members are who are supporting the Political Action Committee and would also be members of NCBA. And so that's a really neat way for, when, for to have staffers and our elected officials come into that office and see who really supports NCBA and its Political Action Committee. The efforts of the NCBA Political Action Committee help elect more members of Congress who value and understand the cattle business, which is important to the long-term success of the U.S. beef industry. Reporting from Washington, D.C., I'm Matt Fleck for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. The work of the NCBA PAC is separate from, but supportive of, NCBA's policy work in Washington, D.C. You can help NCBA fight for common sense federal policies and against those efforts that threaten the future of our beef cattle industry by becoming a member of NCBA. Just call 1-866-233-3872 or sign up online at the website ncba.org. Still ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll discuss fake meat and explain why this is such an important topic for beef producers. And later, we'll head to the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally for a look at a high-stakes battle to grill the best burger. Stay with us. We'll be right back. At Case IH, we believe it's our job to provide you with solutions. That's why our Farmall and Maxim tractors, as well as our tools and attachments, are designed with you in mind. From mowing to baling to loading and more, we're here to help turn your to-dos into to-dones. At Case IH, we'll keep your days running smoothly with equipment that's durable, versatile, and highly efficient. No wonder farmers are more loyal to Case IH than any other brand. Visit your local dealer or go to caseih.com forward slash livestock for more. Let's go to New Orleans. That's where the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show will be in 2019. It's the cattle industry's biggest convention for the first time ever in New Orleans, a city filled with great fun, great food, and an amazing history. You can't miss it, so make plans now to go to the 2019 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show in New Orleans, January 30th through February 1st. Visit ncba.org for more. Welcome back. Earlier, we talked to Colin Woodall about how fake meat continues to be a priority issue for NCBA. We asked cattlemen and women from around the country to share their thoughts on this subject. Anything that's plant-based should obviously not be called meat, right? There's no animal DNA in that product, so um, shouldn't be called meat. That's a wholly different beast than uh, the cell cultured or the lab-grown products. Uh, those actually has animal DNA in it. So trying to understand how they should be allowed to name that and how they should be allowed to market that is, is a different conversation. Uh, we in the beef industry fully believe uh, that USDA should have the regulatory oversight of the lab-grown products uh, just because we want to make sure that if they are allowed to call it a meat product or a beef product, it should fall under the same, I guess, inspection standards uh, that we have for our beef products. And same thing with labeling. Well, I think anybody who's followed the milk story, the dairy story, knows that if we don't do this right, we're going to lose a lot of market share. Um, essentially, 
FDA botched it in terms of handling how they work with the dairy industry in terms of soy milk and almond milk, and, and it really has caused a, a change and a strain. So clearly, I think it's important for us that, however you want to call it, lab cultured meat, uh, alternative plant-based protein or fake meat, whatever you choose to call it, it can't be considered our product. First of all, the, the people producing fake meat think that we're scared of the competition, and that's certainly not the case. What we're asking for is that they that the, that the playing field is level, that they have to go through the same uh, regulations, the same uh, oversight from government that we do on, on our uh, net, on meat that's produced from animals. And so uh, it's also concerning that they want to take advantage of our nomenclature and how we label our products. And uh, we don't think that that's fair that uh, a, a product that's made from a Petri dish or a product that's made from a plant product that's basically looks like meat but it's not meat that they would be able to use the same names of to name their products that we do. Now one place you won't find fake meat was this year's Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. The South Dakota Beef Council held a beef promotion event where several chefs competed to see who could grill the best hamburger. Russell Nemitz has more on the Sturgis Burger Battle. Sturgis, South Dakota, where you'll find not only tens of thousands of bikers, but also beef. And 2018 marked the second year that the South Dakota Beef Industry Council has partnered with the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. The event size and scope make it an attractive opportunity to ride in with a strong beef message. When it's all said and done, we average right around a half million people, and we are one of those events that has a worldwide reach. So. People in Asia who might not have tasted American beef yet are going to be excited about it because they have seen something from the rally and people around the world really want that thing, whatever it might have been, that was at the rally. Uh, we have uh, social media reach that will reach into Asia, it'll reach into Europe and it reaches all across Canada and uh, North America. The things that we always look for as a beef council is those opportunities to really engage and when you look at the Sturgis rally and you look at the numbers of the people that we have here and where they come from we have consumers from all over the world at the rally when you look at the South Dakota beef industry as a whole we've got about four million head of cattle in South Dakota and with that we put together probably about a 4.5 billion dollar impact to the state and so for us, Sturgis plays that vital role. It brings that consumer here. We're connecting our, our egg industry to our consumer, and I just think this is a great venue to do that. This is our second year involved in the, in the rally. Uh, it seemed very positive, the feedback that we got back from last year's rally. Uh, you meet so many different people from all over the world, and for us in South Dakota to reach that many people this local is an asset or an opportunity, I should say. I want them to see the producer side of this, that we are a family deal. We take great pride in what we do. We love what we do, and we love the animals that we raise, and we feel we provide a great product for them. We need to reach people on both ends of, the, of this country and assure them that we have a safe, nutritious product and that they can have confidence in. In addition to identification as the official meet of the rally with signs, banners, social media mentions and other promotional elements made possible by the beef checkoff in South Dakota, this year a burger battle was held in the heart of the events with teams competing for bragging rights and more. Last year after this event we knew that we wanted to have a little more hands-on focus with our consumers. So we sat down with the Sturgis crew and we, and we you know, kind of incorporated this burger battle and we talked to them about how we felt something like that could not only add to our practices but also to them as a whole. And that has been a phenomenal experience because a lot of these chefs that are coming in to participate in that burger battle are, are real strong influencers for us. It's very exciting. It, uh... I didn't think that there would be this much uh, anxiety and excitement in it, but uh, it's fun. It, it was it was unique, you know. Dad, Dad and I both have been chefing for over 20 years at the restaurant, so it's always neat to get a surprise ingredient in it and then just start brainstorming and figuring and working together. So uh, I think everything came out quite well. The winner of this battle 
gets to compete in the World Food Championship for a prize of $100,000. So what that has done, because we have teams that have come in from Los Angeles, we have teams that have come in from Chicago, Atlanta, New Orleans, uh, so all across the United States. And for the producer who helped fund this promotion, the value is in seeing their product, beef, being the focus of unparalleled positive attention at the 78th annual Sturgis Rally. People not only from South Dakota, U.S., but the world. There's just so many different uh, demographics of people that are here that attend the rally. And if we can get in front of them and show them the product that we can produce in South Dakota, it's tremendous. Okay. We have a lot of people that aren't part of agriculture anymore, so they don't quite understand where their food comes from. So it's nice to bring them out into to what I call cattle country and, and show them where it's coming from. As a producer, we work so hard with genetics, nutrition, health, in the production of our product, the cattle. When we market them, we can't stop there. We have to be a promoter of this product. We have to continue all the way to the plate. We have to promote this and get it out to the American people. We're out promoting beef, and what better place than a rally like this in South Dakota? You get 500,000 people, you can't just go somewhere and get that. In Sturgis, South Dakota, I'm Russell Nimitz reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll head to South Carolina for a stockmanship and stewardship event that is helping to educate producers on improved cattle handling. And later, we'll introduce you to an award-winning operation in Minnesota. Stay with us. We'll be right back. There is a new world out there, revealing itself in unpredictable ways. A world that demands more from the land and those who grow, farm, and build on it. This new world calls for the ingenuity to get more out of it while preserving as much as we can. After all, to stay ahead of tomorrow, we need to be equipped for it today. If you're looking for outstanding genetics that will work for you, then make plans now to be at the 2018 CK Cattle Headquarters Sale on October 26th in Hope Hall, Alabama. CK Cattle is a three-generation operation offering the best in Angus, Key Angus, and Sim Angus bulls and females, backed by a family that cares about their customers. The customer is the most important thing in our operation. You know, the CK guarantee is pretty simple. I mean, we live by the golden rule. We want to treat you like you want to be treated. If you have a problem with your bull, we're going to back them. Don't miss their 2018 sale offering more than 100 solid two-year-old bulls and 100 females, including 30 tiger-striped F1 Brayford heifers. It all happens Friday, October 26th. Learn more at the website ckcattle.com. Welcome back. Cattlemen are aware of the benefits of low-stress cattle handling, but are often unsure how to implement those techniques in their own operations. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association is holding regional stockmanship and stewardship events all across the country thanks to the sponsorship support from Beringer Ingelheim and the Beef Checkoff. Brian Baxter has a look at one of these regional events and the benefits to producers of all skill levels. The Garrison Livestock Center at Clemson University in South Carolina was the host location for the first stop on the 2018 Regional Stockmanship and Stewardship Tour. It's really a great way for our farmers and ranchers to get together and learn more. We all know that we're stewards of our land, but there's always things we can do better. And the people that we have doing this, Kurt Pate and Ron, Dr. Ron Gill, are just great at teaching us uh, things about how to manage our cattle, how to be good stewards, how to be careful in what we do and cognizant of what we do, and to learn a little bit about the, uh, the animals that we work with every day. Just the visibility to, to low stress cattle handling and, and Kurt Pate, Ron Gill, um, having the opportunity to, to bring those gentlemen here to, to expose our producers to that. Um, you know, we, we all talk about low stress cattle handling in all of our extension programs. 
but to bring somebody in of, of that caliber um, and, and let them uh, be the expert and to convey that to our producers with their experiences and, and the, their teaching methods, um, we thought would be a real benefit to, to our producers. So the Stockmanship and Stewardship Program, uh, we're trying to reach people all over the country with as many uh, events as we can put together. And that takes a lot of time, effort, and resources. Um, and it wouldn't be possible without the support of Beringer Ingelheim Animal Health, without the support of BQA um, and the Beef Checkoff uh, to reach those producers with what they all know is quality um, education, quality uh, producer opportunities to continuously improve. In the arena, Kurt Pate and Ron Gill demonstrated the techniques, the skills, and the value of understanding how cattle can be worked easily with minimal stress on the animals and the people. And now Kurt can start sending them, and I'm gonna be in a position, hopefully, to step down their side to speed them up and send them forward. So that process actually tells them where to go and then ask them to go, ask them to go there. Actually, what, you, what Ron just did there is he showed them the gate, opened the gate, and then just kept their mind on the gate the whole time. Sometimes talk about the perception of what we're doing. I don't want it to be a perception. I want it to be a reality that everything we do is in the best interest of the livestock and the people handling them. And I think we have the responsibility to do that. The big benefit of stockmanship, it doesn't cost you anything to change the way you handle cattle, and you get rewarded for it financially. So to me, it's a, a no-brainer that you change the way you handle cattle for their benefit, your benefit, and economically. Beyond cattle handling demonstrations, topics at the event range from information on better marketing of calves to insights on growing a cattle business. And producers who attended were certified in the Beef Quality Assurance, or BQA, program. The need to be BQA certified, to me, is just, it's the right thing to do. It sends the message that we know what's right to do and we've been educated to do it and we're willing to go that extra step to do what's right. I always tell our, my producers, if you can take BQA and get BQA certified and, and increase your knowledge base, then when you're talking to that consumer in the grocery store that may not know anything about agriculture, then you're better equipped to, to answer any of the myths that they may have. I think it's a very valuable event for producers because um, as mentioned in one of the panels today, even the feedlots are looking, looking at the cattle and the cattle that are hard to handle, they're hard to manage, don't come to the bunks and eat, can cost them money too and be unprofitable for them. So uh, learning and understanding stockmen and stewardship of cattle I think is vitally important for the producer, uh, the next person who purchases the cattle all the way down to the consumer. With a fee of just $75 for the two-day event, cattlemen and women from operations of all sizes and with all levels of experience walked away with information of real value. It was well worth uh, the trip up here. You know, it teaches us to, to learn how to take care of our cattle, and, and that's what we're interested in, uh, you know, the, the stewardship that goes along with it. Again, we, did, we weren't raised around the animals, around cattle on a farm. So it's new to us and uh, it, it's, there's a lot of value that, that I think we're going to get out of it. I heard the guys talking a while ago about cattle handling. I've been in the cattle business my entire life. Been handling cattle since I was old enough to walk and I picked up some good tips from them today on, uh, on cattle handling. Things I'd never thought about before and, and it, I'll take home and try them next week. In Clemson, South Carolina, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. As you just saw, these training sessions provide valuable, hands-on learning in the area of beef quality assurance and low-stress cattle handling. If you'd like to attend one of these sessions, just visit stockmanshipandstewardship.org for details on when and where you can find an event. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll show you an operation in Minnesota that is leaving the land in better shape for future generations. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Do you know all you need to about working cattle? Did you know there are proven methods that can reduce stress for the animals, for you and your crew? Now there's an easy way for you to learn from the experts who can help sharpen your stockmanship and stewardship skills. In interactive sessions, you'll learn better ways to work cattle more efficiently, skills that can help put more money in your pocket. Find out more and locate an upcoming event near you at the website stockmanshipandstewardship.org. Welcome back. We're continuing our series highlighting the 2018 regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award. Let's head to Minnesota for a closer look at the Region 3 winner. In southwest Minnesota, land at land and livestock has family roots going back to 1928. Today, Mike and George Landit work together to care for their crops and their cattle. Our operation here is a fourth generation uh, cattle feedlot and farm. We have uh, about 2,200 acres of crops and just over 700 head of cattle on feed all the time. Mike's always farmed with us since a little boy. He come with me every day. Anytime you can work side by side with your wife and your son, it's just the best. And the rest of the family pitches in too, so we don't want to forget them. I just love everything about raising cattle. I guess I just, I love being out here with them. I love spending time doing the, doing the jobs that it takes to, uh, to raise them. Back in the 1950s, Mike's grandfather moved away from raising cattle. But in 1999, Mike brought beef cattle back into the family operation. Since then, the Landits have added a hoop barn and a larger monoslope building to shield their cattle from the weather. We feed all our cattle under roofs here. Uh, it works well for us. It helps just keep the environment more steady for the cattle. Environmentally with the, with the barns, there's big benefits there because it keeps the manure more consistent. Or we, don't, we don't have just the rainwater that gets in the manure and then decreases the value. So we, we get rid of that aspect of it. It keeps, there's no runoff. You know, there is zero runoff from our barns here or from our feed yards. It's all contained within the barn and there's no, uh, no worries about any runoff of that sort coming out of the barns. On their croplands, Mike and George use reduced tillage systems to prevent erosion. To protect water quality, they've installed buffer zones along their fields to filter any runoff and they take a precision approach to applying crop inputs. So they've intensified their use of soil sampling. Grid soil sampling, taking soil samples every two and a half acres, and they've been doing it for a lot of years now. That's uh, not something new to them. They're on the forefront of that project. And then also after we get those results, they're really, really strategically applying the manure at the right rates and making sure we're utilizing that manure as a, a valuable a fertilizer source. They're integrating obviously their, the manure that's produced on their farm to apply, um, but they're really looking at um, soil testing as well as cover crop integration. They actually, through um, NRCS, they are do um, with this conservation stewardship program, they actually have an enhancement where they do soil tests where it looks at the actual like microbes and the respiration and everything to see how the soil health is doing on their farm. The earthworms, the microbes, it's all all important function of what, what makes our crops and what gets us the yields we're fortunate enough to get here. A significant challenge is controlling erosion due to rainfall. So the Landits have partnered with NRCS to build 15 water retaining structures in their fields. We've built a lot of basins, uh, water retention basins out in our fields to control uh, when we do get a heavy rain. Uh, most of them are built to withstand a uh, six inch rain and they'll hold all that water back and then they slowly release it through the tile system instead of it all just running down the hill in a matter of minutes. It's metered out and it, it hits the creek slower that way when it does get there. So working with Mike, you know, we're able to clean up the water that is entering the stream. We're able to treat it in the watershed above before it gets to the stream. And so that's why we're, he's making progress that way. And that's why it's so important for our rivers and streams here. They're getting better all along. And it's because of people like Mike and the Landite family as they're doing structures and things like this and doing better management on the land so the water doesn't wash off and take the sediment and chemicals with it. Beyond their farm, the town of Walnut Grove draws visitors who often see what the Landits are doing. That's because some of their land is on the banks of Plum Creek. 
site of the Ingalls family farm, made famous in the Little House on the Prairie books. The Landits also benefit from a nearby ethanol plant, where they can deliver corn and get distillers grain to use in their feed ration. So they have the feedlots, um, but when you look at inputs into the feedlots, they grow all the corn that goes into the feedlot, um, but also some of that corn goes into an ethanol plant up the road, and that byproduct gets fed back to the cattle. And then as a, as a feedlot, um, all the manure in the bed pack uh, goes out into the crops for uh, fertilizer. So they kind of have that holistic approach to sustainability here um, on one farm. From crops to cattle, everything works together on land at land and livestock. And it's clear, the family tradition of doing what's right for the land is in good hands. You know, it's about how to make this farm be here another 90 years. What can we do to, to save money and make it a profitable farm? And they, they tie together so nice because, you know, it's all economic driven. The benefit is, is the things we're doing are also environmentally beneficial. If it's good for the environment, you need to do it. It's just important that we take care of the earth and sure it costs you a little money to build some re retentions structures and stuff, but if it's going to save the soil, save the earth, you just need to do it. And we're all in this long term. Everything we do is is long term. I think that's just where the some of this conservation stuff comes in. It's, it goes to that same mentality of we're in this for the long haul. If you'd like to find out more about the Environmental Stewardship Award winners, see photos and videos, or even learn how to nominate someone for the award, visit the website environmentalstewardship.org. Still ahead on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll discuss some of the exciting events planned for the 2019 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show in New Orleans. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Say goodbye to your toughest pasture and rangeland weeds for good. Because one product offers season-long control, handles the widest spectrum of broadleaf weeds, and clears the way for increased forage with greater grazing flexibility. So you get more beef per acre at a cost that can't be beat. It's Grazon Next HL Herbicide. And if it's in your pastures, plain and simple, weeds won't be. What does it mean to be dependable? It means you do what you say you'll do time and time again. Because performance isn't optional, and your task is essential. For over 95 years, we have proven ourselves to be the most dependable choice. That's why the cattlemen of this great nation trust Ritchie to provide fresh water on demand. Ritchie, proud to be a partner to the American cattlemen since 1921. If you're connected with the beef cattle business, then you should like the NCBA page on Facebook. The NCBA Facebook page shares photos, news, and valuable information about the beef cattle industry. You can also follow the NCBA Twitter feed at BeefUSA. So stay in touch with NCBA on Facebook and Twitter. Each year, a huge crowd turns out for the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It's a unique and fun environment for cattle industry members to come together, network, create policy for the industry, and have a little fun. We asked cattlemen and women from all across the country why they value coming to the convention. The value that I get out of going to convention is the networking with all, all the producers all across the U.S and some of the educational components I've learned a lot uh, sometimes from the Cattlemen's College, sometimes from the trade show, but a lot of times just running into somebody from a different area or who's using a new technology that I haven't seen before and something I can take back home to the ranch and implement on my operation and increase my productivity. The learning opportunities, Cattlemen's College, to really look at a segment of the industry that you want to know more about and go to those educational sessions and then the trade show in itself. However many acres it ends up being in New Orleans, uh, under roof of products and things that can make us better, more efficient producers or just new technologies that maybe I can bring home and relate to on my farm, or maybe I've never heard of that before. It's all in one big package, so in about three days you can get a total immersion in the beef industry as well as find out about what's going on globally too. 
California Industry Convention is one of those can't miss, right? Um, if you haven't gone or haven't attended, you see so many old friends, and, and it really is. It's, it's a combination of business and social, and I, I am shocked if people aren't going to try and figure out how to get to New Orleans. Joining us now is Tiana Schneider, NCBA's Manager of Trade Show and Event Marketing. Tiana, why is it so important for anybody involved in the beef cattle industry to come to convention? Awesome question, Kevin. So the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show allows cattlemen and women to come together to network, create policy for the industry, and have some serious fun. And a lot of people like the educational opportunities as well. Tell us what we can expect in New Orleans. Yeah. So we always offer educational opportunities at the convention. So this year in New Orleans for Cattlemen's College, it's shaping up to be better than ever. We have 25 breakout sessions, and we even have a special guest, Temple Grandin. Wow. Um, we also have the demonstration arena on the trade show floor that features the stockmanship and stewardship program. So there's so many different educational opportunities that can't be beat at the convention and trade show. I would agree. And not to uh, top education, but uh, you all put together quite a show in terms of entertainment. Tell us what yes. we can expect. We always have so much fun lined up. Um, you may know our opening general session speaker, Terry Bradshaw, from his pro football days. Mm -hmm. Terry's going to be bringing us some advice on how to work as a leader and how to create a team and really impact your future and have success in those areas. And then we'll also have our general session two is the always popular cattle facts update. And then our closing general session is John Andresik, which you may know the lead singer from Five for Fighting. Mm -hmm. He's going to explain to us his successes and failures as mm -hmm. a musician and in the corporate industry. So that's really exciting. Um, Wednesday night, we'll have the welcome reception on the trade show floor. Mm -hmm. And then Thursday is the Mardi Gras masquerade. <laughs> yeah, That'll be fun. Um, at Mardi Gras World. And I am just over the moon to see how our attendees and guests react to this venue. It's amazing. And then Friday night, we have the Cowboy Concert Series with Big and Rich. So for sure going to be a great time. And then to wrap everything up, we'll have the Louisiana Last Call also on Friday night. That sounds like a lot of fun. And yes, I've heard Terry Bradshaw speak before. He is not only a good football player, he's an outstanding speaker. So another big highlight of our convention and, and, and things that I hear people talking about all the time is our trade show. Yeah. What uh, do you have in store for our trade show this year? So as you know, um, our trade show is the largest in the industry. So this year for New Orleans, we have over 300 exhibitors, both new exhibitors and exhibitors that have been with us from the very start. So the trade show floor spans over seven and a half acres, which if you put that into perspective is huge. Um, we're completely theming the trade show floor to be New Orleans themed. Um, our main aisle is actually going to be called Bourbon Street. <laughs> um, so, so amazing. We have different lounges, all these networking opportunities, um, a really fun Creole cafe on the trade show floor, and then again, the demonstration arena that features the stockmanship and stewardship program. Should be a lot of fun. So what do people tell you about what they see in terms of value of coming to our convention? That's a great question, Kevin. Um, so we always have our attendees come back year after year. Um, they, they see the return on the investment, the benefit it is to their operation, and they keep coming back. So we keep providing awesome educational opportunities and a real reason to keep our guests and attendees joining us for the annual convention year after year. Um, the feedback is fantastic. And then we also do offer scholarship opportunities mm -hmm. for those that, that need that financial support. Mm -hmm. um, so be sure to check out the website for those different opportunities for farmers and ranchers. So for folks watching who may want to attend, uh, what do they need to do? And one common question I get is, do you have to be an NCBA member to attend? Awesome. Um, so ncba.org is going to have all the information that you need. So to attend convention, um, registration opens October 1st. We highly encourage that you register as early as possible. We do increase our prices. So in order to receive the best rate, um, just register just as soon as you can. So again, that registration open date is October 1st. Um, and then to be an NCBA member, you get an even better deal, but our convention is open to both members and non-members, mm -hmm. and you can become an NCBA member throughout the registration process. Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming. We'll look forward to seeing you again as convention nears. It's going to be a fantastic time in New Orleans. Thanks so much, Kevin. Now, it doesn't matter if you're a first-timer or a long-time convention attendee, we want to see you in New Orleans. The 2019 convention runs from January 30th through February 1st. Registration and housing opens in just a few days. 
on October 1st. So go to ncba.org for all the details on this can't miss event. Still ahead, it's time for a visit with our good friend, Baxter Black. Stay with us. The 2019 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show is set for the Big Easy, New Orleans, Louisiana. It's the cattle industry's biggest convention with education, networking, and fun. Plus, you can check out the huge NCBA Trade Show, outstanding entertainment, and much more. So let's go to New Orleans for the 2019 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show, January 30th through February 1st. Details at ncba.org. If Baxter makes you laugh, you're at the right place. He has an offer, of course, this is a commercial. Six hour-long DVDs filled with live shows, Emmy-winning comedy, all Baxter at his best. And the price is right, 25 bucks plus shipping. 800-654-2550 or online at baxterblack.com. You wanna know what he's like in real life? Well, kinda like you. We know you're up before the dawn because the cattle rise before the sun. And you spend long hours in the saddle because the herd isn't always over the next rise. And you care for the land because you know it takes care of your family. And we know you do great work. And it's time to tell that story to the marketplace. I am I Global. I'm here to help you do just that. My friend Steve is in the avocado business, which I think makes him an avocadonist, or maybe an avocadonarian. The winter that the freeze hit Southern California, it wiped out his crop. Steve explained that 20 degree weather kills the fruit and it becomes useless. I commented that when old bananas turn black, the average mother with children will say, don't throw it away, we'll make banana bread out of it. So I postulated, there must be some way to use old black avocados. There is a rum drink with pineapples, coconuts, and a paper umbrella called the piña colada. How about the ava colada? Maybe use something dark like prune juice, a coagulant like vitamin K, a miniature Mexican flag, and of course, the jalapeno. Overripe avocados might do well in a sushi bar. The menu special could read, today's special, choice of pimpled, pockmarked pieces of sea urchin or four-ply radial pencil eraser garnished with avagui, a stringy, slightly off black mass that sticks to the roof of your mouth like mutton fat. There could well be a place for over-the-hill avocados on an airline in-flight menu. Along with your three pretzels and peanut, you could get a hermetically sealed, naturally wrapped organic container of avo caca. The discriminating passenger would squeeze a dollop onto the lowered tray where it would adhere. As the aircraft yawed, pitched, and rolled, the avocado would slide back and forth, leaving a mucoid trail like a slippery snail. It would be served with a Q-tip and motion sickness bag. So many possibilities. You ever look at the hair care aisle? They've got conditioner and shampoo made with everything from pine tar to whale scat. Why not avocado poo? A little bit goes a long way. This is Baxter Black, avocado maniac from out there. Thanks, Baxter, but I think I'll stick to the guacamole. Want to rewatch an episode of Cattleman to Cattleman or catch up on anything you've missed? Then visit our YouTube page. You'll find all of our shows filled with educational segments and producer profiles from all across our country. So check us out on YouTube. We're back right after this. No matter what job I've got to do, my John Deere 5E tractor can do it all. Whether I'm cutting, moving feed, or building a fence. Using my 5E means my work gets done faster at a price I can afford, and that works for me.
Join the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. NCBA is the oldest cattle industry organization, working every day to defend your interests in Washington, D.C. And there are big benefits to being a member. You'll get news you can use in the National Cattlemen and policy updates from Beltway Beef, plus big discounts from John Deere, Cabela's, and more great partners. Join now. Call 866-233-3872 or sign up online at ncba.org. It's time once again for Legacy Photos as we share some great shots submitted by our viewers all across the U.S. Let's take a look. Would you like to see your photo on Cattleman to Cattleman? You can submit your favorite shots a couple of ways. Either message them to us on the Cattleman to Cattleman Facebook page or email them to c2c at beef.org. Well, that wraps up this edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Thanks so much for spending time with us. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.